In this video, I want to give you a little insight into the studio task. Currently, we are in the modeling environment. We can still enable the advanced studio and get a preview of the materials, backgrounds and the lightning we've defined. But we can also define one of these predefined scenes. And you realize even a floor is enabled, where our objects are mirrored and a shadow is cast. But why do we have a studio task in which other rendering tools are provided? The reason is quite simple. At the moment, we might still want to construct something. We'd like to add or edit something. If instead we just want to refer to the lightning and those rendering specific things, therefore we should prefer using the studio task. Below home we have all the tools, below view we have specific tools that we can use for rendering, etc. The disadvantage, however, is that we cannot simply add an object. For this, we always have to leave the studio as comparable to sketch handling. But what we still can do is switch to shaded mode. If this happens accidentally, for example, just do a right click and pick the advanced studio icon. Therefore, you really don't have to leave the studio task. I have chosen a scene and materials like chrome and aluminium are selected. Now we can take a deeper look at the studio task. There is a small gallery here and I can turn things on and off in this gallery. For example, I can turn off the ground and you can see the floor reflection and the ground shadows are gone. And if the ground was enabled, I could turn off the reflections or the shadows. These options are actually only available in the advanced studio. Reflections and shadows are always calculated in the ray trace studio unless those options are enabled or not, unless you disable the overall ground. As long as the ground is enabled, reflections and shadows will always be calculated and it makes sense if the floor is reflective and the environment shall be reflected on the floor. And you can adjust this by the way. In a scene editor, you can adjust the floor more accurately. Below environment, there are the ground settings. I can set the ground visibility and reflection here. And you can also increase or decrease the reflection capacity of the ground. You may be loading a scene where the bottom and the reflection are enabled, but the possibility of reflection is set to 0%. Of course, you will not see a reflection then, independent from whether the selection on the ground is turned on and off. Furthermore, you can adjust the floor position once more. And it makes sense because your object's positions will change here and there. Also typical for system scenes is the background which is in use. At the moment it's white, but if you use the gray scene, you will have a kind of gray flow instead. And you can also see harder shadows because the lightning conditions are different. Because the ground is diffuse and not reflecting mirror-wise. And this background can be adjusted or defined within the scene editor and you will recognize that nearly everything will happen in the scene editor. Below background you can see that at the moment there is a two-dimensional image being used and you can set this to a plain color instead and I pick the background color white. We now have the additional possibility of defining ambient shadows. Those ambient shadows are simulated independent from the defined lightning. And you can see when I zoom in a little bit that an X is going to simulate some tiny shadows here. And those are really independent from light just to simulate a kind of realism within the scene. By the way, the scene would be more realistic if body edges were hidden. Therefore, we have this setting. And if you are already satisfied with this image quality, you now have the possibility to export an image and choose a specific size or format. And the images can be really huge for a poster photo, for example. But I'm just going to close this. Well, we have seen a lot of things now. And in the scene editor, you could see there are some background settings and some ground settings. You could already see in the previous video that we can set image based lightning here. And here it says advanced studio settings use image based lightning. There is not just image based lightning in use. As you can see, when it's disabled, there are still some lights and reflections. 
We do have further light sources, of course, which are by default used within the modeling mode as well. And here you can find those below lights, for example. And those lights are used with the image-based lightning at once. If I disable this settings, the lights are only used when there is no image-based lightning in use. To disable these lights, which also works by use of another tool, you just have to decrease the intensity here. And you can see there is nearly no difference at all. The reason is that we have a material, chrome, which is reflecting mirror-wise a lot and not diffuse. For this reflection, there is an environment image being used, which is still enabled and has a higher priority to reflecting materials. But what I can show you, by the way, is that if you disable the Advanced Studio Display to the Shaded Display, you can see it's black because the lights are missing. There is no reflection at all. Also, the image-based lightning has no effect when the Shaded Mode is enabled. How can we now reset the lightning, which we usually have enabled within the Modeling Mode? And this is something you should remember, because if you do light settings, you have to know how to reset them. You can reset this via the command advanced lights, independent from whether you're in the studio or in the modeling mode. It's always available. But this command is by default not integrated in the studio modes. To integrate it, use the command finder and search for lights. And here you can see advanced lights and basic lights. By the way, with both options, you can reset your lightning settings. I use the advanced lights for this demonstration. It is just one button that we need via actions and reset to default options. It is just one click to reset to default. By the way, after you have added or removed some of those lights with this button, you can afterwards. Reset to defaults with this command. There is a further tool that we can use. I am within the modeling mode now. I'm going to search for lights again and this time open the basic lights. You can see its layout is slightly older and there are three enabled lights of eight possible light sources. Those are the same lights that we have reactivated within the advanced lights command. Also, the intensity value is the same as before. Also, here you can reset via reset to seam lights or reset to default lights within the modeling mode.